So one of my mentees asked me for some uh, advice on how to model this column header. And as simple as it looked on the surface, I actually ran into a bunch of trouble because, and this seemed like a valuable lesson to pass along because my, my thinking tends to be set up to favor Booleans these days. I do lots of Booleans. And I saw these, uh, you know, these cylindrical shapes or, or half cylinders and thought to myself, well, we'll take some half cylinders, we'll intersect them, we'll union them, we'll make some sort of a slanted cube mesh and we'll kind of smash it in there. And But honestly, no matter how many times I tried, it just would not work out. You know, there were always mesh errors and weird stuff going on. So uh, when I sat back and took an honest look at it, I realized what we actually have here is we have a round shape transitioning to a square shape at the top. With that in mind, I, I was able to you know, put together a simple uh, plan of attack using straightforward modeling. And that's what the rest of the video is going to be, how I chose to attack this. Check it out. Uh, you know, the intro, I, I realized that we need to transition from a uh, round shape to a square shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a uh, cylinder, then create a matching box for it and place it on top of the cylinder. Uh, that'll give us the basic primitives that we need to, you know, to get going with this. Now we want to have a nice transition from, you know, the, uh, the round to the square, which means that the square shape needs to have an equivalent number of sides. So it has four right now. So it's, it's going to need 24 to match the sides on the cylinder. So we just have to, you know, add five or add five cuts to each side, which gives us 24 sides. Selecting both the edge loops, uh, we can bridge it. Then grab the cylinder top and drag it down a little bit. And once we let go of the tool, we'll fire off a mesh cleanup, which will fix those polys that are having challenges. <laughs> so there's our basic shape. Now the trick is how do you get those cylindrical cuts to hold up? And the method that I came up with was just simply to do it manually. Just let's, let's select all the verts and just drag them up you know, until they resemble a cylinder shape. And that seemed to work out actually perfectly. You know, sometimes the, you know, my inclination is sometimes to look for the fancier solution and, and sometimes the answer really is just, just eyeball it or just start modeling it. And I mean, it's like one of those things where you you search for a shortcut for something you know, and you end up wasting more time looking for the shortcut than j just brute forcing it and it's sort of what it, you know what ended up happening here was it, you know the same situation i could have struggled with booleans for you know, you know a much longer time than i did but you know, ultimately the actual solution was just to brute force it and Booleans probably would have gotten me there eventually, but at what cost, right? You know, the cost of time. So anyway, since, since we have the shapes basically modeled in, now I'm going to throw edge weighting on the uh, sides there where we have the cylindrical shapes kind of mapped out. And that gives us the general form we're looking for, circle to square uh, with cylindrical caps. And you know, of course, we're going to use the rounded edge shader here to make things look a little prettier. 
uh, just a little finagling with you know with dimensions and things just you know uh, as artists do and just to give a little head nod to that uh, a little ring thing on the bottom yeah, there, so there's the basic shape and I believe we're gonna throw a rounded edge shader on it and yeah, here we go and throw up a render and that is how I would approach that particular column shape so hope you found that useful thanks for watching